You can bet your bottom dollar these facts will be interesting. If you have one left, that is. I declare bankruptcy! Welcome to Watch Mojo's Top 5 Facts. In this installment, we're counting down the five most interesting facts that we could find about bankruptcy. I just wanted you to know that you can't just say the word bankruptcy and expect anything to happen. I didn't say it, I declared it. Number five, the gender balance is tipping. Statistically speaking, women are more likely to file for bankruptcy than men, for the first time in modern history. It's a battle of the sexes you'd rather not win. But according to recent statistics, ladies, not dudes, are more likely to go broke in the 21st century, reportedly because of overspending and consumer debt. According to The Telegraph, which reports 2015 findings by the Insolvency Service covering England and Wales, women under the age of 25 are almost twice as likely to go bankrupt as men. The divide exists in the US too, though it's less harsh. Debt.org calculates that 52 women file for bankruptcy for every 48 men. On the other hand, a 2013 study at McMaster University concluded that companies performed better with women in the boardroom making financial decisions, citing a 2009 paper which found that firms cut the risk of bankruptcy by 20% by having at least one female director. Big mistake. Big. Huge. Number four. It's not stupid to go bankrupt. We borrow a few bucks, just a small loan from the briefcase, and we find ourselves some reasonable lodgings. Good plan. You might feel a little foolish if you ever go bankrupt, but there's no direct link between someone's intellectual capabilities and their financial situation. Studies show that less intelligent people are as likely to succeed and be wealthy as clever people, and more intelligent folk are equally threatened by failure and financial difficulty. In a 2007 study conducted by Jay Zagorski for Ohio State University, the link between the IQ and wealth of over 7,400 Americans was analyzed. While results indicate that there is a correlation between IQ and income, i.e. the better your IQ, the more you take home, the study found no link between intelligence and the likelihood of credit card problems, missed payments, or bankruptcy. Zagorski suggests that the findings show that smarter people struggle to save money. He points to the university parking lot as evidence. Despite the supposed smartness of professors, you see a lot of old, low-value vehicles, he says. So while it isn't really rocket science to make money, it's not difficult to lose it either. Number three, health problems often mean money problems in the US. Transplant surgery is very expensive. In most cases, prohibitively so. Cancer survival rates are going up, which can only be a good thing. But studies have shown that cancer survivors are consistently more likely to go bankrupt than people without the disease, due in large part to hospital costs. A 2013 survey led by Dr. Scott Ramsey matched the financial situations of almost 200,000 people affected by cancer with an equal amount who haven't been. Transplant surgery, doctors' fees, post-operative care, immunosuppressant drugs, you're looking at a minimum of $250,000. Results showed that 4,408 of those diagnosed had filed for bankruptcy, compared to 2,291 without a diagnosis. Furthermore, a 2010 poll by the Harvard School of Public Health and the Knowledge Networks organization found that over a third of heart disease and diabetes sufferers linked their worsening financial situation to their poor health. The poll also found that 4% of those with heart disease and 9% of those with diabetes were forced to declare bankruptcy because of medical bills. I can do this. I can pay. I swear to God, I'll pay you the money back. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I promise you I will. The adage says that you can't put a price on your health. But unfortunately in America, you can. And some patients just can't pay it. Yes, ma'am. I need to speak to somebody in financial aid. Number two, saying sorry often helps. I'm sorry? You apologize too much. Uh, um, sorry about that. In a similar way to a number of other legal situations, an apology in the courtroom during a bankruptcy judgment is proven to increase the debtor's chances of a more favorable ruling. Young man, having my judgment mocked in my own court is not something I'm prepared to tolerate. According to a 2013 study conducted by the University of Illinois, the decision of a judge can often be influenced by a display of remorse. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. Jennifer K. Robernolt, a co-writer of the study, argues that bankruptcy cases are unlike any other in court because, she says, the harm is often spread across many creditors, so there is no single victim, and the debtor initiates the case, which may be perceived as acceptance of responsibility. And the truth shall set you free! 
Essentially, although the debtor is looking to relinquish financial control, they do hold a small degree of control within the courtroom itself. One more word out of you, Mr. E, and I'll hold you in contempt. I hold myself in contempt! As bankruptcy judges have to discern the likelihood of a debtor honoring a proposed payment plan, saying sorry can help build a better, more commendable personal profile. Is it too late now to say sorry? Robert Nolt says that the findings suggest that bankruptcy is at least in part about forgiveness, and that judges' decisions can be complex and multidimensional. Is it too late to say I'm sorry now? Number one, it happens to the best and most famous of us. Vern, look at me. Do I look good to you? I'm broke and I'm depressed off my ass. Bankruptcy can be billed as a very lonely state of affairs, but it's more common than most people probably believe. About one in every 70 American households has filed for insolvency, or will do so in the future, and studies show that over 40% of American families spend more than they earn every year. Although the global economy has improved since the financial crisis of 2008, as long as tendencies to overspend continue, bankruptcy will threaten. Even the rich and famous aren't immune. Talk show host Larry King, legendary animator Walt Disney, former heavyweight champion Mike Tyson, and 90s rapper MC Hammer have all filed for bankruptcy at some point in their careers. Even the iconic former president Abraham Lincoln had his assets taken from him during an early career as a shopkeeper. And hey, now he's on the penny. If that doesn't give you hope, nothing will. Euclid's first common notion is this. Things which are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. So what do you think? Is it absolutely ridiculous or kind of understandable that the rich and famous sometimes go broke? Those are IOUs. Go ahead and add it up. Every cent's accounted for. For more cash strap top 10s and apologetic top 5s, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Hey.